In this video, we're going to look at the operators and eigenvalues for nuclear spin. So much like we had for electron spin, we're going to have a total spin angular momentum operator. So we have I squared. So for electrons, this was S squared. So I squared, as we said, is going to be the total nuclear spin angular momentum operator angular momentum operator and then this is also going to have a z component of which our nuclear spin function is going to be an eigenfunction and this is the iz operator so the component of the nuclear spin angular momentum along the z axis and this is the Z component of nuclear spin angular momentum. Very long-winded name. Z component of nuclear spin angular momentum operator. So hopefully that's clear from the name what we're talking about. We're talking about the same thing we had for electron spin, but for a nuclei. And we're going to have spin functions, just like we had for electrons. So we're going to have spin alpha, the spin up wave function. So that's spin up alpha. And then we have beta, which is the opposite, spin down, the spin down wave function. And we're going to look specifically at these operators and their eigenvalues for the case of protons specifically. So these are four protons only that we're talking about. So if we have I squared operate on alpha, then that is going to give the eigenvalue 1 half times the eigenvalue 1 half plus 1 times h bar squared times alpha. So the eigenvalue, the full eigenvalue is one half times one half plus one times h bar squared, and there's this quantum number one half, which is the total spin quantum number for the alpha nucleus, and i squared has the same eigenvalue for beta. It's also one half times one half plus one h bar squared beta. So where does the difference come in here now? The difference is coming in when we're talking about the IZ operator, where we'll have a distinction in these eigenvalues, because IZ acting on spin up gives us 1 half h bar times spin up. And we have IZ acting on beta spin down gives us minus 1 half h bar beta. So this is a proton. So a proton is a nucleus that is just one particle. It's just the single proton itself, so, so a hydrogen nucleus. And alpha and beta, they both have the same total spin, both uh, square of the total nuclear spin angular momentum. But then we can differentiate these states by whether they are spin up or spin down from their eigenvalue of Iz. And these have the same kinds of properties that we talked about for electrons in terms of their orthonormality. So for example, the integral alpha alpha here in Dirac notation, which would be the integral of alpha star, the complex conjugate, as a function of the nuclear spin variable tau. Uh, we use the nuclear spin variable sigma for electrons. It's going to be tau for nuclei. So times alpha, the ket here, as a function of tau, and this integrated with respect to d tau. And that is equal to 1. So that's a normalization of the spin up wave function. Similarly, the spin down wave function is also normalized. And these two are orthogonal to each other. So if you do the cross integral here, where you have beta star alpha or alpha star beta, those are both going to be equal to 0. 
So this is uh, specifically for protons that I said this, but this is actually true for all spin one-half nuclei. So I'm going to make a list here of some common spin one-half nuclei. That is nuclei that have a uh, total nuclear spin angular momentum quantum number of one-half. So there's a quantum number here of one-half, as you see there. So these are spin one-half nuclei. And those include things like H1. So there's H1 NMR is a common type of nuclear magnetic resonance uh, spectroscopy. These are, <clears throat> these are going to be the energy levels and the uh, operators that we're using when we're interested in NMR. Similarly, carbon-13, very common form of NMR. Nitrogen-15, less common but also widely done in 3D NMR on proteins and things like that. You can also do fluorine 19, phosphorus 31, and there are many others. And you can also gather uh, the spectrum on certain nuclei which have spin 1 and various other things. But these are, um, these are the nuclei which are very commonly used for determining the uh, structure of organic molecules. And we're going to specifically focus on this playlist mostly on H1 and seeing uh, how can we go from these types of operators and quantum mechanical energy levels to predicting a lot about what the, what the structure of an H1 NMR spectrum will look like.